So this video lecture just introduces the theories of psychological research and of psychology. The first theory is called the psychodynamic theory. And the person that uh, built the foundation for this theory is a fellow named Sigmund Freud. Uh, Sigmund Freud is probably the most popular psychologist that you will hear about. And what his belief was, or his theory was, about human behavior is that our behavior is largely driven by something that is internal to us or something that is part of our subconscious. He came up with three uh, parts of our subconscious that uh, affect our behavior and he called them the id, the ego, and the superego. He said that the id was uh, our tendency to just act out on whatever we want. So if a child would, uh, would want a cookie uh, and the cookie is in the jar, the child would go and get the cookie. The, according to Freud, he also said that there is something called the ego within each one of us and the ego monitors whether or not we're going to be injured in a certain situation and it will affect our behavior because of that. So if the child is going over to the cupboard and the child fears that maybe the child's going to get hurt by going to the cookie jar, the ego would affect the child's behavior and that the child might not get the cookie because the child might get hurt. So the id would be the compulsive behavior, just go get it. The ego would be the behavior that says, no, I might get hurt, so I'm not going to do that. And then Freud also said there's something called the superego. And the superego is that part of us that sort of deals with the morals and values. And so a child who sees the cookies in a cookie jar may not go and get a cookie out of the cookie jar because of the superego saying, you know, your mom said or your dad said you weren't supposed to take any cookies out of the cookie jar without permission, and so you're not going to go to the cookie jar. And so Freud, from a psychodynamic perspective, says that our behavior is largely a product or driven by something within us that is part of our subconscious. A second researcher called B. F. Or named B.F. Skinner, uh, he came up with a theory that said that our behavior, uh, unlike Freud, who said it's part of the stimulant or part of what's in uh, within us, uh, B.F. Skinner said that's not the way our behavior works at all. Our behavior is a product of the stimulus that comes from outside, and so B.F. Skinner said that if the uh, behavior or if the if the stimulus feels good, then we are going to do that behavior. If the stimulus is negative, then we won't do that behavior. Skinner is uh, uh, renowned for something called the Skinner's Box, and it was uh, a box that he had constructed where he placed his uh, children as they were being raised, he placed them into that uh, box where he was able to control the environment. And he believed so strongly in the idea that the stimulus from the environment affects our behavior that he wanted to control every aspect of that for his children and study that. The uh, third psychologist, uh, or the type of uh, uh, behavior that, that, we, that we look at is called the cognitive perspective. And the cognitive perspective on our behavior has to do with our mind. And one of the uh, foremost psychologists in studying the cognitive perspective is a fellow named Jean Piaget. And Jean Piaget said that our minds develop at certain stages, especially during the childhood period between the ages of birth and, and, uh, and 12 years of age. And they're very specific uh, stages that children go through in their development and it's the way their mind develops and that has the greatest impact on behavior. So the behavior of a two-year-old, there is a certain behavior that you can expect of a two-year-old, he would say, because of the development of their mind. Then there's a certain behavior that you would expect of somebody that's 11 or 12 years old because of the brain development or of the cognitive development. So that's another perspective uh, in psych psychology. The, uh, another perspective has to do with the humanistic perspective. And in the humanistic perspective, one of the, the people that uh, has given greatest leadership to that is a fellow named Abram Maslow. And Maslow said that our behavior is really driven by our needs. 
And he came up with a hierarchy of needs, or sort of something that looks like a pyramid of needs. And he said that at the lowest level, our needs are for shelter and for food and for safety. And so if, if, we, if those needs have been met, that we're satisfied with our food and shelter and safety, then we'll move to higher levels of needs and our behavior will be um, appropriate with those needs. He said that the highest level of needs that we can achieve as humans is something called self-actualization. And that's in a place where we believe that we can sort of solve all of our own problems with the resources that we have available to us. It's that place of self-actualization, he said, and that is what he said, that's the goal of every person is to be a self-actualized person. Uh, that's uh, the humanistic perspective, and that was Abram Maslow. Another perspective on human behavior was offered by a fellow named Conrad Lorenz, and Lorenz said that really we are our behavior is affected uh, by something called the evolutionary perspective or from our genetics. And Lorenz is famous for his study in, with newborn geese. What he found is that in newborn geese there's an imprinting that happens at the moment of their birth that they are programmed to follow the first moving object that they see. And so Conrad Rad Lorenz in a laboratory setting would, uh, would hatch out these geese and the first thing that they would see would be himself and so they would begin to follow him. And there are pictures of him as he's walking and the pictures of the geese as they're trailing along uh, uh, with, with the geese as, as he's going. The last perspective is that of the socio-cultural perspective. And in that perspective, a fellow named Yuri Bronfenbrenner uh, said that we are affected by the interaction with people around us. And he said those people who are closest to us are part of something called the microsystem. And so those are the perspectives, uh, the grand theories of research that sort of form the foundation of thinking within human behavior. There's a short, short quiz to accompany this uh, short lecture, and you can go to that quiz now. Thanks for watching.